The invasion of the jellyfish. The queen goes green. And the wax and marky bill? Is it full of hot air? This is Green Dig. Green Dig. Green Dig. Our oceans have been taking center stage in environmental news. From the Great Pacific Garbage Patch to collapsing coral reefs, shark fin hunting, or the growing pollution dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico, the oceans in many ways have been hardest hit by human impacts. One of the most dramatic examples of this was reported by the University of Queensland, which has done a study on the alarming invasion of jellyfish. Due to overfishing and warming seas, jellyfish populations have been exploding in oceans all around the world. Some species, like the tiny shallow water idukanji, go after humans and have a fatally poisonous sting. It may not sound like a big deal, but jellyfish are like a weed species in the marine world, capable of taking over an entire region of the ocean, crowding out other species permanently. On Monday, President Obama called for an emergency task force. He gave him three months to come up with a plan to help save the ocean. In just a few days, Congress will be voting on what could be the most important piece of environmental legislation in history, the waxman markey Carbon Capture Bill. Now, the Carbon Capture Bill... Oh, oh my God. This is actually... Congressman Waxman. I called him to try and clear up a few things. Hello, Mr. Congressman. Yes, yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh. It's not carbon capture. Oh, I'm sorry. I... It's car carbon cap. Okay. Well, you know, I, there was just so much language in there about capturing carbon and not very much about capping it. I got a little confused, you know, because of the cap thing. Uh-huh. Okay. Cl I'll clear it up. Thanks. Oops. My bad. Well, you'll see why I got confused. As reported by It's Getting Hot in Here, climate advocacy group One Sky organized a phone call with Senator Waxman last week to clarify some of what seems to be deficiencies in the bill. The bill presents an 18% reduction over 1990 levels. The body consensus deemed that a 25% reduction was the minimum that was needed to avoid a catastrophic global climate change. The bill also hands out 50% of pollution permits for free, not the 100% auction that Obama originally said he wanted. Basically, the idea is to help the energy companies save money, which they can then pass along to their customers during the transition, but the bill does not require them to pass along those savings. Thirdly, and perhaps most concerning, is the fact that the bill removes regulatory oversight by the EPA. So essentially, there's no cops to watch for compliance of the energy companies according to the law. This bill is not about limiting energy companies and their ability to burn coal, but rather it's to help them transition gradually to capturing that carbon using carbon capture technologies. Now, these carbon capture technologies don't yet exist. Oh, and his other idea was that we could start building more nuclear power plants. So if you think that wax and marky as it is is going to save the planet, don't hold your breath. Oh, wait, actually do hold your breath because if we all hold our breaths, that'll reduce the amount of CO2 being emitted in the atmosphere and maybe that'll do the trick. The British royal family is definitely stepping up to the plate this week. It looks like that famous hug did rub off when Michelle Obama met the Queen of England. Her royal highness donned her gardening gloves last week and planted a vegetable garden at Buckingham Palace. And the same week, Dell Computers joined a campaign started by her two very handsome grandkids who launched an interactive video contest with an animated frog to help save the rainforest. Check out the link in the sidebar. Last but not least, in a stroke of vegan genius, Sir Paul McCartney came up with a brilliant idea called Meat Free Mondays. As I've talked about before, the raising of cattle for the beef industry is a major source of carbon dioxide emissions. So I pulled out my calculator and did some number crunching and found out that if every American went meat-free one day a week, that's about 50 days a year, we would save the equivalent of 13.5 million tons of CO2 from being emitted. It's a pretty good idea, Paul McCartney. This has been the Daily Dig, a countdown of the top environmental news stories of the day. I didn't get to include my fashion correspondent, Jen Breckenridge, who did a great interview with Deborah Lindquist, so look for that tomorrow.